just to ease in, I want to ask, you know, we're like 12 hours off the premiere. How are you guys feeling this morning? I feel great. I'm just happy that it's out there in the yeah, world now. Yeah, it's good to let it go. It feels, you know, it's always uh, such an important part of the process to not own it anymore and to give it to everybody else, and it's theirs now, and it feels like a, an important part of the process. So, And, I, I mean, that's a good segue into this was such kind of like an emotional experience just putting it together, conceiving it, conceiving it together. How did you first, the two of you, hook up in terms of, like, deciding to make this project? Well, we uh, had met many times at Sundance and kind of chatted and were friendly. And um, it's like dating, really. It's like the right person at the right time in your life when you make a movie, the right collaborator at the right time in your life. And it really is that kind of an intimate you know, thing. So um, you know, we just got really lucky. I mean, it, it was, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got really, really lucky. This uh, Two weeks before they started production, I got a call from Drake. And he's like, hey, uh, want to do this movie in two weeks? And I read the script, which is more of an outline than an actual script or screenplay. 80 pages? I yeah. felt like it was longer than that. No, it's, it, 80, it's 80, but it's dense. It's thick. There's it's a lot super of dense. emotion in it. The script is basically just an, an outline of, a, of action points. And there was a little bit of dialogue, but they were more sort of suggestive points or specific lines that he wanted in the film or whatnot. But when I read it, I, it was so intimidating because you think, how am I supposed to jump into something without having the time to know the character inside and out if I'm going to improvise this whole film? And our first phone call and speaking with you, I'll never forget it. You just, your heart, I feel like we, we're so similar in so many ways as people and as human beings, the way we experience the world. We're both obsessed with love. We both really love love. We both hate, hate heartbreak, it but it happens a lot for us. And... Um, and I think that those are our simple humanity points of reference and points of similarity is what drew us together, I think, in a lot of ways with this film. And then being on set and having him as the, you can breathe, even though I'm giving you compliments right next to you. <laughs> um, being the, the guide on this journey, you, you, I keep saying it, but you created such a safe space for us to play and experience and feel and there'd be days where we would both be crying together because the scene would remind us of so many vulnerable moments in our own lives or in friends' lives. And I think being able to personally connect with someone, and I just, this experience will never happen again in my life unless we work together again because there is no one in the world who makes movies like you. And you are just one of the most dynamic humans I've ever met. And I'm so grateful. You can still breathe. <laughs> I love you. I mean, I, I, I would agree with that for sure. And I would say that I, I was curious kind of, you know, you talk about the two week uh, lead up time. Uh, is, this, is this standard for you to kind of ambush people like this? No, I mean, it's funny. I mean, Felicity was a week and a half before. Um, I mean, it just happens sometimes like that where either you, you know, you, you cast one person and they feel right and you just haven't found the other person and you just keep looking and you just put your faith in, in, in the process and say, oh, you'll get there eventually. But that, you know, we spent a week rehearsing with, the, with Jamie and Spash and just talking and going through it and having dinners and talking. I mean, it was just like so immersive that I think by the time we started shooting, it only took a couple hours to just get in and then we were just in and then it was just, it was just a frequency that we were writing. And, you know, two nights before the end, uh, the last day of shooting, uh, I said, what's the movie missing? What are we going to go pick up in a couple months? And then she had an idea for this really important scene where she comes clean and apologizes to Jamie's character in the film. You know, she's like, oh, we're going to go shoot that in a couple months. And I'm like, no, we're not. We're going to go shoot it right now. So then we just did it and just added it. I mean, that's the kind of flexibility that we had. But I mean, she's just always thinking about everything um, that her character's going through and really helped complete her arc. How long is the initial writing process? Like, to get to that 80 pages, how long was that? Usually pretty quick, because these, uh, you know, these diary entries uh, are, are like lightning in a bottle experiences for me. Like, I feel something that I've been through, and I want to go make it right away before I don't feel that way anymore. Mm -hmm. Because in a year or eight, six months even, uh, uh, you know, different, or I've learned something. And I, I, before I fully learn it, I want to go shoot it, because that's part of the growth. One thing that really stands out with this in your body of work, and I, I hope both of you could speak to this, but um, like crazy, newness, all these films, they're, they're kind of, they're co-leads, they're about couples. This is, this is a real character study. This is a real kind of focusing on one person, and it's intimate in that way. Um, and I'm wondering how much you feel like uh, the work you did 
together drove the work with Sebastian and with Jamie, like how, mu how much they were kind of built around, around Shay's character. Uh, it's every, I mean, they were just following her lead. I mean, she's in every yeah. scene in this movie, every frame of the movie, and nobody could have done it but her. I mean, it was just so immersive. I mean, it's my favorite, it's my favorite performance in any of my films because of that. It is so singularly that. I mean, if any of it doesn't all happen at this frequency, the whole thing falls apart. I mean, it's just a house of cards, and the arc um, is just so specific. But I mean, I think, you know, she's so different from Daphne, but at the same time, she gave her everything she had, and you can feel that in the movie. It is so vulnerable. It is so emotionally naked. Yeah, it was emotionally and physically, at times, naked in this film. <laughs> but uh, do you feel like there were things... Do you feel like there were things they were getting from you in terms of, oh, like, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, like, suggestions, like, she is this, so this person means this to her? I can't speak for them. I think we really just, I mean, can I tell them about our road trip? No, that, that I just said that? You have to. It's, okay. it, it so, Drake, the whole thing up. our first dinner that we had when I f got to L.A. to start the film, we were, so we started the movie up in Big Sur. There was two days of filming up there, and I hadn't met Sebastian yet. And I was like, well, why don't we drive to Big Sur, you, me, and Sebastian? We get in a car together, and we get to know one another so that by the time we get there five and a half hours later, we know, what we're, we know the movie that we're making. Mm -hmm. And Drake was like, yeah, I'm down. The producers were like, no, bad idea. Don't do it. Um, but Sebastian was also in, and we did it. We ended up driving for five and a half hours, and the amount of inside jokes and the vulnerability that came from that drive alone really drove our characters forward. I mean, the first day of filming with Seb, we we had to be very vulnerable with one another and, and intimate with one another. And to jump into something with an actor like that and to have him, you said something about frequency, but I felt like all of us were riding on the same frequency. So I don't know if it was me informing them about my character that made them make decisions. I think it was me truly saying, I'm gonna give you my heart and if you can give me yours, like we can create magic. And they all, everyone did. Everyone just put their hearts on. It was just bleeding, <laughs> pumping hearts on the table for a month in Los Angeles. Well, there's always so much bullshit that comes with movie making, right? So it's like the idea of just getting rid of that as quickly as possible, then you're just, you have such a head start with trying to find the truth with each other. And we just really got there. And it was just like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna give each other each other's truth and we're gonna push each other and we're gonna be honest. And if something's not working or we feel something, we're going to say that. So in that sense, I think that bo both the boys were very, yeah, I mean, they were ama amazing because of that. But I mean, they were just following her. There's so many movies out there, but it's nice to make movies where women are making decisions. Right. And men are following those decisions and dealing with those decisions. So that's what they were doing. And they were, you know... Is there, is there some sort of detox process you keep for yourself in terms of separating yourself from Daphne at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month? Is there something you... Everything in my life changed from this movie. Every single thing. I thought I knew who I was. I thought I was in a perfect relationship and I did this movie. And it made me question a lot of things about myself and my decisions. Um, and I think it's because of the amount of truth and the amount of realness that we were all giving one another. It took me like seven and I'm just now detoxing from Daphne. Mm -hmm. I really I feel like I, last night was the first time I could watch the movie objectively and say, oh, that's, I'm, I'm watching it now as Shailene separate from my own interconnectedness and messiness in this process. I can watch it and enjoy it. But yeah, it took a long time. I would say it actually took like really four months to, to separate myself from from the film because it just, it it was just one of those catalysts that really kind of puts you on a roller coaster and, and resets the GPS of where you think you're going in your life. There were so many self-realizations and that's what it is. It's like, we approach it like we're gonna go make a film. It's just, it's not gonna have the same impact and it's not gonna turn out the same way, but if we approach it as in let's go explore together and let's try to self-realize a lot of things and grow, then maybe we end up with a movie at the end of the day, great. You know what I mean? But it's more about that. That's the objective. You talk a lot about self-realization for both of you, and, and Jamie and Sebastian spoke a lot about it last night as well. Um, I'm wondering, I'm gonna put you on the spot, I'm wondering what you each feel is the most important thing you learned from each other that you will take on. That we're searchers. Yeah, well that's actually true. Hey, what's the meaning of this? What's the truth of really the truth about that? What does this mean? 
you know, because there's so many things in life that are not important, yeah, yeah. but focusing on the things that are and understanding the things that are right. and how to be and how to be in a relationship, how to be a friend, all those different things, I think. Yeah. And I think one of the things we learned from the character together is that infatuations really are a Band-Aid, mm -hmm. in a sense. And I think true peace and self-love and harmony comes from being alone and being okay being alone. And before you can do that, it's hard to be with anybody else. And that's kind of what the movie's about. And I think we really kind of realize that in our lives as well. I'm wondering if each of you have advice for you know people in this audience that m might be making work on how to be a good collaborator and how to um, generate that sort of connection with people. I would say you know, especially at the beginning of your career, you know you want to have all the answers. You want you want to always have the answer, right? But it, I guess I, the thing that I loved about this collaboration and as I'm getting older and making more movies is it's okay not to have all the answers. And it's okay just to listen for a minute. Right. And it's okay to go off and think and then come back and make a decision. You just, there's, there is no better collaborator in the world than you. I mean, I, everything that you said and then on top of that, I'll never forget there was one scene that we were doing it was between me and my mother and I was very adamant that I wanted the scene to be a certain way and he was like, I just don't feel like it's, it's this way, and I was giving him all of my points on why I thought it was, and I feel like that was the most argumentative moment we had in the whole in the whole it's good film. Good argue, you want people to push you. So but you were so you were like, okay, do it your way, and we'll do it my way, and then we'll find the balance between both of of how we th both think the scene should unfold, and that's what uh, that's I feel like what ended up in the film, and yeah. being open and staying staying true to magic is is really where the essence of true collaboration can occur. I, I'm going to open it up to the audience in a second, but I was curious. Uh, do you guys have already plans to work together again? I mean, I Absolutely. do. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He doesn't know it, but I'll be on every movie set from now on. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, is there a specific project in the works? Are you, think, is, are you thinking about something? Are you discussing something? Uh, nothing specific, really. Just uh, a lot of, you know, ruminating, and when the time is right, we'll do it. You know, it's the right project, but... I mean, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. It's fun to do that, and I've done that in the past with Nick and Felicity and a few other people, and it's just, once you get back in the group, it's just so fun. Because right, right. then you try something different, and then the dynamic's different, so it's, it's the same, but totally not the same. So it's just so fun to like, you know, weave in and out. All right, I'm gonna open it up to the audience. Please. Right here. My question is to Shalin. I would like to ask you, since you are an amazing activist and inspiration for a lot of people, I would like to ask you, what's your, uh, what's most important for you right now? As it relates to this process, actually, and what we've been talking about in this movie, I think whether you're talking about environmental injustice, social injustice, you break it all down, it all fa falls under the same umbrella of love. Everyone just wants to feel love, everyone wants to be seen, everyone wants to give love, and none of us know how to do it because none of us know how to communicate anymore. And this, I mean, this movie in general was a great example of how to empathetically and compassionately communicate even when there's um, aversion, even when there's differences. And I think that's what we need to be talking about in the world. And you all can call me a hippie for saying that, but we just need to love more. Because if we don't do that, nothing else will change and nothing else matters. For Shailene, what was the hardest part and the best part about playing Daphne? I'm a very controlling person. So for me, it was hard to, to allow myself to kind of be reckless for a hot minute because I'm so analytical and I'm just a very responsible person. So I would never, I'd be in the situation Daphne was in, but I would handle it differently than the way she handled it. I'm an over communicator, she's an under communicator. And so I think the hardest thing for me was allowing myself to be a little bit messier than I am in my real life. So that was the hardest part. And then what was the other question, the best part? Or, um, I think my favorite part was was the free-spirited nature of Daphne. She's somebody who I think has a, like we're all very self-deprecating and I think she's extremely self-deprecating, but she still wakes up in the morning with this idea of, uh, she's, she's a searcher. We kept using that word, but she's a searcher. She's someone who's searching for something a little bit deeper, a little bit more meaningful. And she internalizes that as a negative thing, I think, for most of the movie. And so my favorite part was watching this woman switch that from something that was negative into something that was a positive. What was your starting place for this amazing script? And what is some advice you can offer to aspiring writers? The starting point was just uh, making, making mistakes in my life. You know, um, you know, that's how I feel about, you know, 
the process, really. I mean, I just started writing after I had gotten out of a long relationship and was just thinking about things I was feeling and trying to ruminate on those and put those in. And I think advice-wise, I would say go and live life in between things. Don't just force yourself to write to write. I'd say go experience life and make mistakes and get your heart broken, break your own heart, all those different things. And then when, when it's time to, to, to put pen to paper, you can do it. But, um, yeah, I think it's really important to go make mistakes and go live your life. But. Um, as a director, how do you create a safe environment for your actors? And how, with uh, improv, how do you like help them if they have to get to some point where you wanted them to go? Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> well, the safety, I think it's just uh, allowing them to see you fully so that you're not hiding anything. If, if, if the actor ever feels like you're hiding something or passive aggressively not telling them the truth, they, they won't trust you. So I feel like it's just building that trust as quickly as possible so that you're not hiding anything. You know, you're just an open book. And I think that creates that environment. Um, and improvisationally, I mean, you, you, start, you start somewhere where you throw everything up against the wall and then you start to hone in on it. But for me, it's all about knowing the event of the scene. What's the event of the scene? What is the scene really about? And then most importantly, what's the emotional event of the scene and objective of the scene? And everything and everything that's in the scene that's improvised starts from there. Hi, uh, my question's for uh, Shailene. What do you typically uh, look for uh, in characters when you're reading a screenplay? Nothing, to be honest. Um, when I read a screenplay, it's like a it's an instinctual feeling that comes across me. And I actually don't notice my character until the second time I read a script, generally. I read, I read the story for the story. And if I feel moved reading it, if I, sometimes I, I don't feel that moved, but I still have butterflies. And that's when I know that it's something that I have to try and fight to do. The only way that you could be right for something is if you have that intrinsic passion and you have that deep kind of soul calling, pulling, to a specific role or to a specific project. And I honestly never know who my characters are until probably a, a quarter of the way through filming. I don't know who they are because I do think that I could spend, and I think this is different than, I was never like a professionally trained actor, so I think had I gone to school for it, I'd probably have a different narrative surrounding this idea. But for me, I never know who they are until I'm with the director and I hear what his or her ideas and perspectives and directions are, or I see the other actors looking at me, or even if there aren't other other actors and you're working with a green screen or with an ocean or with a tree, whatever these, the surroundings are for that person, to me that informs the decisions that you're creating. A uh, question for Drake. So from the original script and filming, um, you said that there was a lot of things where you changed shooting order and different things like that. How closely did you work with your editor and how much was there anything that drastically changed from the original script to like when you were in the editing process or maybe a rearranging of scenes that you didn't foresee? Something like that? Yeah, I mean, it's a tricky, it's tricky editing improv because there's just so many different directions you can go in. And that's why um, I'm usually in the edit room right off the bat because we have to kind of find our selects and find the direction of the scenes right away or else you know, we can make eight different versions of the movie. So right away, we just go through the, the scene and just make a selects reel of just the stuff that feels honest. And we don't even think about building the scene yet. Just pick all the moments that are, that are real and honest and get rid of everything else. And then from those pieces, then we try to build the scene. So that's kind of how we, we do it. Gosh, I mean, things just change all the time. You know, we, the light's different. So we're in a different mood. Let's jump to that scene. It's just trying to roll with the punches a little bit and, and listen to your own you know, uh, emotional frequency in a, in, a, in a way. I mean, there's there's a whole section in the third act without giving any, anything away with Jamie and Shay's characters that was completely removed. So that's probably the biggest change. Um, but yeah, I don't. I mean, you know, it's just really, you know listening to to your heart and, and you know not being so you know keeping to a schedule is important, obviously, but also keeping to the movie's schedule is, is even more important. Well, I think we have to wrap up, but I want to thank you guys so much for coming and doing this Thanks conversation. For having us. Thank Thanks you. For Thanks for coming, for coming guys. You guys.